Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Blog. This one, big number 224. So I've got a very special guest in the T. Shanley house. One Mr. Antonio Centennial. You guys have seen him before and uh, wanted to just kind of kick this vlog off. He is in town because why? And, 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 and for the record, I always get in trouble for interrupting people. So I'm going to do a better job. What do you... I, I'm just timing how long you're going to keep talking before <laughs> I get my chance. All right, go, go, go. <laughs> Menfluential. The last one. I mean, this is it. This is I'm, it. Yeah. Are you sad? I am a little bit sad. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm relieved. Why you did put we, a lot why, of work. And I think this yeah. is really, sorry for interrupting. Why, I think this is like, this is a business vlog, as you know. Yeah. And so I think there are some very valuable, like, business lessons in what we've done and what we decided to do with stopping yeah. it. So would you kind of, like, go through that? And I'll shut up. Well, I think for every year, I mean, the first few years we did it, it was just, it was, it kept getting bigger. It was amazing. And then we reached this point where we pretty much were maxing out the number of people that could be in that space. And it was like, okay, do we take this to an event that could have thousands of people? And do we need to go find a whole nother location? That adds a lot of complications, a lot more work. This is not something that we set out to make money with. We ran it like a nonprofit. And I think the last couple of years, it's been something we've, the, there wasn't an option of actually ending it until you know we started thinking about this and we're like, hey, well, what happens if this is the last year and we just wrap this thing up? And I think when we came to that conclusion, it felt like the right thing. And I think that we forget that that is an option in business and it will be an option for all of us because if, you're, if you own a company, if you're running a company, there is always an exit plan. And that exit plan may not be what you expect. You may be in a casket. Or you may be, you know, sick and you know in the hospital, and that's not that's that, Whoa, that's not what you just want. Got dark. Yeah, well, I mean, but you got to have everything comes to an end. Everything has to be turned over to somebody else, and you've got to make. it. We wanted to end this on our terms and say, hey, we're ending this at on a high note, and we're, we we got a lot from this. We accomplished mission. We did what we wanted to do. The thing and, yeah. about and the thing that Antonio and I were talking about um, this morning, actually, when we were driving around, is just. Where, when we all started this, this is what, year number seven? Yeah. Seven years ago, to think about where each one of us was back seven years ago and think how far we've all come to this point, it, it's really amazing. And I truly feel like if it wasn't for you reaching out to me and saying, hey, let's meet up in Anaheim at, uh, what was it, VidCon, and let's do this because before this, I hated Antonio. Yeah, because he reached out. He was like trying to steal my pictures. <laughs> I wasn't trying. No, it was, it was your articles. I needed articles, man. And yeah. uh, I have these shirtless photos of me out there. And he's like, I really need those photos I need because them. I don't have the body like you. This do. is yeah. getting out of hand. <laughs> but I truly feel like if it wasn't for you, I mean, I, I truly feel like not only did you reaching out, you know, give me something more valuable than anything, which is an incredible friend because I, I love you more than anything. And um, Frank, Fr <laughs> it's a close second, my cat Frank. But I mean, but I never knew or would dream that like I would develop such a close friendship with you. And I think that's another sort of, I guess, business lesson is that, you know, Antonio saw things differently than I did. I always looked at things as you're either, it's either I'm winning or you're winning. And if, if, if you're winning, that means that I'm losing. And so he looked at things very differently and thought of things more from a holistic approach in terms of we can all help each other and we can all grow. That was completely counter to my mindset. And, and I think that what you really showed me was that, you know, it's more important to have people around you that can help you and that you can lift each other up and, and develop those relationships and those bonds. That's really what's going to move the needle. You know, people aren't always, you know, trying to come and like steal your lunch money. And I think sometimes they are, but what has happened and what has sort of transpired as a result of this conference, just from a, a personal level, just meeting you and all these incredible friends that I have met, Menfluential, the advertising agency has, has, has been born because of this, this yep. sort of this, this conference and, and meeting all of these guys. If it wasn't for you reaching out to me, I don't know where I would be now. I know that you know, I wouldn't have the, the, the fulfillment and the... You'd be dead on the, the side of the road. The joy like, that I do now. Body because... parts in different dumpsters. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, I'd be dead. <laughs> there it goes, right there. <laughs> Soundbite, drop the mic. That's the, that's the clickbait title. Antonio saved my life. 
Um, no, but but do you feel the same or, or yeah. how do you, I mean, I'm I, much more I'm much more emotional than Anthony. I'm much more you know when I look at all these guys like this is why it's going to be a really fine, I mean this last men influential. I'm just thinking all the people that have come here year after year and to be able to see their growth to be able to see some of them have dealt with setbacks and how they've bounced back or not yet bounced back and the stories they just get better every year so many guys reached out they're so upset they can't make it but they've lost weight they've found a girlfriend they've gotten married they're now in college and they look back i mean in seven years a lot happens in life and it's just amazing to see yeah, companies that have formed out of this, companies that have actually started and failed since, you know, being built. But other companies like, you know, I was Anson Belt and Buckle. I mean, going from they, what they used to make in a year, they're now spending with advertisers in a year, and they're making, you know, 10 to 15 times what they were whenever this conference started up because of the power of just networking. And, not, and that's kind of an ask. I mean, people don't like the word networking, but actually building real relationships and it's a win-win situation. That's what we've created, and uh, yeah. I'm proud. Yeah, I'm proud too. And, and it's gonna be very emotional, like just like ending it, but you know, we do have plans for the future in terms of things that we wanna do. Do you wanna tell about, I mean, by the time they're watching it, it's over, so we can yeah. sort of talk a little bit yeah, about Yeah, we're talking we're about meetups. Uh, I mean, what do we enjoy about this? And I think, again, from a business perspective, you fall into a rut. You're doing the same thing again and again, and you forget that hey, like this is my business. I should be having fun, and I think that's what we, and we weren't able to. Say, we weren't able. The, the thing that got the was so hard about this. We're still running the. I mean, it's work. We're running around picking up trash, and I mean, it sounds bad, but we have such high standards that we can hire people to do things, but we're like, they're not doing it with the love and attention that needs to be done, so we go and we jump in on it, and we do not rest and don't stop. AKA, we're anal. <laughs> yes, and, we, and, and we're like doing all this stuff running around. It doesn't stop, and I mean, at the end of the day, we, we can't, we're just ready, we're exhausted. We're tired, yeah. and the other unfortunate thing is that we can't just hand this over to somebody. It's got our name on it. Well, I mean, this is menfluential. We, we've we have tried it. Yeah. We, the, we, it, it. Honestly, we've yes. tried. We've tried to hire people and to bring people on because everybody has great ideas, right? Like, oh, just give it to me and I'll be able to take it to this level or I'll be able to do the selling in terms of the tickets for you. And the truth is we tried it a few times and just every single time it falls back on us. And so it was a, uh, it was, a, it was a hard call, but I think as soon as we sort of acknowledge like that this is an option that, you know what, if you want, this could be the last year, it was almost like a weight was lifted yeah. and it became fun again. And we can bring it back. So we're going to do meetups. I think that's what we're going to hit towards, <laughs> you know, and because we enjoy seeing people and engaging people, but in a limited window, you know, it's one of those things like, so we, three hours in London three hours in New York City, three hours at a bar in LA, you know, meeting up, I don't know, where, where else? Ukraine, right? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. I, I wanna be remoted in. <laughs> so the plan moving forward is after this year, we plan on doing like two, like sort of loosely organized meetups. Now, the one thing we're not doing, we're not gonna collect any money. We're just basically gonna have like a sign up list of this is where the next you know, sort of menfluential meetup is going to be. Anybody who's interested, sign up. Max I, may, I may charge them five bucks just to be able to tip the bartender. And I want to make sure if you sign up that you're going to show up. I find that, you know, five bucks, is it's not a whole lot. But it's enough that, like, hey, you know, you're truly committed. The thing is, we want to just simply meet people, you shake their hands. You realize that if we do that, if we do that, we've got to keep the corporate entity open in order to and then we have tax returns and then it's it's no well, you can just make it a donation or something i we we yeah. set uh, up around unfortunately that. we're not a nonprofit you got to think through these things before yeah. you just throw yeah okay so <laughs> <laughs> you see how this whole thing works anyway i think antonio what i would like to do on the on the on the you know final menwajo conference vlog um, I'd like to just get to some of these business questions because last time I told the guys that we would get to some of the business questions. Let's do it. Let's do it. And let's just jump right in. Gentlemen, your questions. You ready for these? Let's do it. All yeah. right. All right. So the first business question comes from Jason Lynch. What's up, Jason? Thanks for hanging out with us. He says, hey, Aaron, I'm looking to start making YouTube videos and maybe grow a business from that. I was wondering if it's required or worth creating an LLC or a sole proprietorship in case the channel becomes successful and starts making money. The more I look into starting a business, the more I get scared of starting one. Taxes, 
getting sued, etc. Thank you for your input. So it sounds like Jason is talking himself out of it before he's having gotten started. I mean, Jason put in the work first. Like show up and actually start creating videos. There's no, you don't need to start a business. You just need to simply create videos. I don't, I mean, people, wantpreneurs, we hear this all the time. They just want something. Make a hundred videos. I'm serious. Like simply just film a whole bunch of videos and put in, and then show me that. Say, hey, I made a hundred videos. I'm thinking of now monetizing this. That's a much better way to put this than I'm thinking about creating videos, which may lead to success, which may lead to problems. Oh, I'm scared. I'm not even going to get started. That's basically what you're saying. That's partly, yeah. I mean, that yeah. is what he's saying. Yeah. But I'm going to take it a different route. I would say, to answer your question, just start making videos. You're not making any money yet. And so what I would recommend That's is just, just, <laughs> just get started, start making the videos. And then what happens is you will start to earn money relatively quickly. Now, it's not going to be big money up front, but you're going to get money per view, that you're, per thousand views that, that you put out there. And so if you get you know, a thousand views in a month, you're going to make you know, $4, $5, $10. Depending on the industry, it could be $100 per thousand uh, views. And then you're going to just claim that on your regular taxes. But then as it starts to grow, and if you decide to start an entity, there are going to be some benefits for you basically starting and having an LLC and being able to deduct and write off certain business expenses. And so, like Antonio said, just get your ass filming, and then eventually, when it's time, you'll know when that time is. It's time to then set something up a little bit more uh, legally and professionally. But great question. Business question from our friends Bikram Bagani. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. He says, hey, Aaron, I know you once suffered a failure in the fitness industry, but now you're successful. So my question is, do, to, do you ever think about revisiting the idea of opening a fitness center now that you have money to do it? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there that saying if you're, what, a multimillionaire and you want to, you know, become someone that only has thousands of dollars, open a fitness store? <laughs> No, no, I just made that. <laughs> that <up. is> just... <laughs> so, have I thought about it? Yeah, I think about it a lot. And I think about how glad I am that I'm not in that industry again. What the fitness industry and that dream of mine, that was that was what I did from the age of 12. And as I, you know, grew up and as I was able to do that, you know, a lot of the excitement about, you know, fitness is still there, right? I still love fitness. Every single day I work out. It's my passion, it's what I truly believe is has fueled my confidence um, and has taught me you know more about myself than anything but the truth is at this stage of my life it's not my dream anymore it's not my goal and that's okay my goals have changed your goals will change as you experience different things you know what I now think of success is very different than what I used to think success would look like but the only way I could get there is if I've sort of gone through you know the the highs the lows and 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 sort of sort of lived and, and figured things out now Looking back, if I were to do it again, I would change a lot of things. But in terms of the amount of workload, the amount of, the amount of competition, there are easier ways for me at this point and stage of my life that have a lot less stress and a lot less risk. There are easier ways for me to make a living. And so the answer is I've thought about it and I'm so glad I don't have that business. Antonio has had a clothing company before. And uh, you want to tell that amazing tale no, it, of uh... a... Yeah, it was a complete failure. Uh, first business I started, um, you know, making good money, except we were losing more money than you're making. So, <laughs> business lessons. Yes, yeah, you're not going to make that up with volume. And uh, I'm so happy I'm not in that business anymore. And I think that one of the things when you do this publicly, you make these videos, is that we actually are able to document and see it. So I, if you've ever looked at some of your old journals that maybe you wrote in high school and in college, talking about your dreams and your ideas, and you go back and you revisit that, you realize, you know, I'm a different person now. I don't have those same dreams. I used to want to be a paleontologist. And as cool as that a paleo, sounds, what? a paleontologist, <laughs> yeah, or an archaeologist. And that still sounds cool to me, but I would do it in a very different way. I realize I would never want to work for a university. I would never want to be beholden to a boss. So if I were to get into that, I would much rather be self-funded. We actually are talking about a buddy of ours that's a treasure hunter. Uh, saw him at Starbucks today. And you know, I still love that idea of being a treasure hunter, except the fact that it would be my company and I would be able to direct where we're going to go treasure hunting. So you, your dreams, you can still have them and you can still go after that, but you'd want to modify it to where you're at in life 
and not, you know, maybe the limited vision you had when you were 16, when you, when you were 26. Now that you're 36, now that you're 46, and you've got more means, yeah, go after that dream, but don't feel that you have to be beholden to the original idea. Amazing. It's like you've done this before. I'm once or twice. <laughs> Next question. Next business question comes from our friend Ice Cream Isle 11. Why don't you read it? Because I've tried to read this three times. And so, I just what can't. do you think you'd be doing if YouTube hadn't come along? No way to know for sure, but I guess you would be probably in some type of business. Do you think you would have reached the same success? Also, if you listen to How Do I Built This podcast by Guy Raz, you know he asks entrepreneurs at the end how much of their success is attributed to their hard work and intelligence, and how much came from luck and being in the right place at the right time. Wow. Wow. What was your question? Be, it is a, it's an yeah. incredible question. What would you be doing if YouTube hadn't come along? Well, I would have figured out, you know, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I had that clothier. I was trying to figure out sales and I was writing blog posts. So I have, and I still have a successful blog that makes good money. And so maybe I would be, you know, in a different realm. I mean, I think that there would be some type of video. I fell into YouTube videos because I naturally am better on video than I, I'm a horrible typer. And so I can't write, I mean, I can write, but I can't type to save my life. So I just found it was easier to talk to a camera. So there would be some type of video then out you, there. Then you saw me doing it and yeah, you I said did. to your wife, tell them that story, that's funny story. Yeah, yeah, so, so that story. So I see Aaron making these videos and I'm like, this guy's an idiot. I can be doing better videos than him. Because he didn't know jack about suits. Bingo. I'm there designing, making suits. I'm like, this guy, I, I could kick his butt. So that's exactly what I did. I went on there and I created deep videos about men's suits and custom clothiers. Lo and behold, we started attracting an audience and I have seen so many other YouTubers probably say the same exact thing. This guy knows nothing about shoes. This guy knows nothing about watches. This guy knows nothing about fragrance. And they came in and they owned those niches. So, you know, does it have to be on YouTube? No, I think there are people with great communities on Facebook. I mean, the people have ideas in their head and they'll find a platform, whether it be a billboard like Craigslist or whether it be, you know, Facebook or Instagram or what was formerly Tumblr. I don't know what that thing is nowadays, but yeah. What would I be doing? Um, I don't know. There are a few industries that I've- Beer owned. carts? Beer carts, yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I, I would own the beer cart, like, posse. Anyway, um, I think, I don't know. I think after the fitness, because I was so, like, ingrained in the fitness industry, um, I think that if YouTube hadn't come along and this whole, like, style consulting thing, I was, I was trying to be an image consultant for a while. I don't know. I really love like the the um, the hair industry. I love like you know Pete and Pedro, as you know. And so I think to myself that if I were to take up like a trade, it would either be like a sushi chef or a hairstylist because I love like there's something for me. I love watching people good sushi chefs. And so I've often said to my wife, I said, you know, if I ever like retire, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to school and learn to be a sushi chef. It's just there's something about it. The other thing is, is a hairstylist. I just love cutting hair from the age of 12. I've been, you know, basically cutting my own hair. I've cut friends hair. It's how I made a little bit of money in college. I just love cutting hair. And um, one of my most fa uh, famous, one of my most successful YouTube videos early on was how to cut your own hair. Yeah. And so, um, no, I, I love hair. So I think that I'd probably be like a hairstylist or I something. I think a hairstylist that specializes in sushi looks in the hair. <laughs> That would Next be like question. the perfect combination. Get out of here. Who asked you? Hey, Next you're question. one thick boy, apparently. <laughs> Somebody was saying, you're one thick I'm boy. I'm one thick boy. The comments <laughs> are amazing when you actually, just so you know, like the YouTube comments love are, you. are the funniest I -B -Y -P -P. thing. I-D-Y-P-P. Yeah, love what you. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, we some I am. Hold on, I think that might be the end of it. I think that yeah, might be, uh, let me just see real quick. Guys, great questions this week. Really good. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's where we're going to wrap things up. Can okay. I grab some cool. sushi? I, I'm, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the mood for yeah, sushi. Yeah, let's now. go get some sushi. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, that's where we're going to wrap things up. We are going to be filming uh, the next vlog from the Men Influential Conference. I'm going to bring the camera and uh, catch those guys. Kelly, I believe Kelly, Rob, Akin, and Josh are coming down, and they're going to man the T. Shanley booth, and uh, we're going to have a, a great time. Like I said, this is a party. It's the sort of the farewell party, and very low pressure, we feel good, we've got some, some incredible people coming and it's gonna be good to just come and connect with old friends. Uh, but the number one old friend I'd like to connect with is right here in front of me. 
So thank you. <laughs> we still have to hang out. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Guys, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes and a T-Shanley. Actually, that's what we said. Guys, have a great day. See you next <laughs> week. Bye. <laughs> See ya.